So in this video, we will be going over the product property of exponents, also called the product rule. If you notice, we have the same basis here. And so when we have that, we just add our exponents up. So that's the product property there. Before we get into it, let's do a quick review of what a power is. So we're looking at b to the x power. This is saying that you have x factors of b. So factors, those are things being multiplied. So another way of saying that is we have x number or x amount of b's being multiplied together. Let's look at where the product property comes from. This quick example here. So this says we have two fours being multiplied times an additional three fours being multiplied. So what does that look like? So two fours being multiplied looks like that. And then times another three fours being multiplied. So there's another three fours being multiplied. So here we go. We have a total of one, two, three, four, five fours being multiplied now this pattern holds for all of them where you if you have the same base and you're multiplying you just add the exponents up now there is a misconception with this sometimes people want to also multiply the fours together you, nope this isn't 16 to the fifth it's still four to the fifth when we add these exponents up it automatically includes multiplying four times four because one of these and one of these is included in the five so you don't actually multiply those together the examples we'll be doing today, they're super similar to the ones that we've done before. The main difference is that we're also including now negative exponents and exponents as fractions. Okay, so go ahead and uh, try these ones out on your own. Pause the video, then come on back and see how you did. Looking at letter A here, we have negative 7 to the 5th power times negative 7 to the 3rd power. So same basis, so we know we're just going to add the exponents together. So that's going to make negative 7 to the 8th power. Now, quick little tangent on this. When we have negative bases and exponents, um, sometimes you can just remove the, the negative on there if they're even. So check this out. If we have a negative 7 to the second power, that's going to make a positive 49. Negative times negative makes positive. So 49 is the same thing as positive 7 squared. Okay, so if it's an even exponent, you don't actually need the negative there. So, but when we have a negative exponent, right, we have three negatives being multiplied, that's going to make a negative 343. In this case here, 343, that's seven to the third power. So negative seven to the third power is equal to negative seven to the third power. But when we have an even exponent, like a four, that's gonna make a positive number. If you have four negatives being multiplied, it makes a positive seven to the fourth power in this case here. Another odd one there, that's going to make a negative number. Five negatives being multiplied makes a negative. And in this case here, so we could rewrite this as negative seven to the fifth power. Uh, if we have to the sixth power, it makes a positive seven. Negative seven to the seventh power is still going to be negative. And in this case here, the one that we're dealing with, negative seven to the eighth power, we could write as positive seven to the eighth power. Now, for this case here, we're fine either way. Um, if you knew this trick, this side note, or if you didn't, we still have the same value whether we write it this way or this way here. Letter B. Here we have n to the one half times n to the five thirds. Now, in this case here, same basis, so we know that we're going to add the exponents. So here we have a fraction with two different denominators, a two and a three. So with this one here, we do crisscross straight across or multiply the diagonals and then. Uh, multiply the diagonals and add and then multiply the denominator. So here we go. So we're going to go one times three, that's going to make a three and then two times five, that makes a 10. So we add those up for our numerator uh, of the fraction. And then for the denominator, we just multiply two times three and that's going to make six. So there we go. N to the 13 over six. Now let's look at letter C. We have B to the negative 11 times B to the seventh. We have same basis, so we know we're just gonna add the exponents. So in this case here, we have a negative 11 plus a seven. So we're thinking money here. You have to pay $11, but you only have seven. So you owe more than what you actually have available. So you're still gonna owe money. And then 11 minus seven makes four. So B to the negative four would be our answer there. Now, if you do remember your negative exponents, 
Anytime you have a negative exponent, that actually goes in the denominator. So this could be rewritten as one over B to the positive fourth power. So this kind of depends on the instruction. Sometimes they say no fractions. So this would be your answer. But if they say like in the instructions, no negative exponents, then you'd have to rewrite it like this. So you do have to pay attention to the instructions. So looking at letter D, here we go. We have negative four times P to the fifth times three P to the eighth. So this one's got kind of a lot going on. So we do want to break it up into smaller chunks. So first up, let's look at the number part of it. We have a negative four times a three. Okay, so we're going to end up doing that. And now we have a P to the fifth times a P to the eighth. Well, same base. So we're going to add the exponents. Okay, so here we go. So this is kind of the direction we're going to go. We're going to go negative four times three, negative four times three. So that makes a negative 12. Okay, we have negative times a positive makes negative. And now we do the P to the fifth times a P to the eighth. That's going to be P to the 5 plus 8 makes P to the 13th power there. So with these ones, when there's a lot going on, break it up into smaller chunks. Do the number part first, 4 and 3, negative 4 and 3, and then P to the 5th, P to the 8th. Okay? Now let's look at letter E. So we have M times M to the 4th power. This one we just kind of threw on there just to remind you that that M, that's an M to the 1st power. So M to the 1st power times M to the 4th power add the exponents, you have m to the fifth power. Not a big deal there. Letter F, we have z to the second power times z to the fifth power times z to the sixth power. So same base, add the exponents. So in this case here, instead of just two things that we're adding up, we're adding three exponents together. So that's going to be a two plus a five plus a six. Two plus five is seven plus six makes 13. So z to the 13th power for that one there. Letter G, now, in this case here, we actually do not have same bases. So the product property or the product rule does not apply to this one here. You can put it into a calculator if you're looking for a value, but you're not using the product property on this one. For letter H, we have 6 to the 4th plus 6 squared. Again, product property is not going to apply to this one here because this is being added, not being multiplied like these ones here. So a misconception that comes up from time to time is when we go from multiplying to adding. So, so in this case here, if we have 8x to the third plus 5x to the third, this is a add like terms type question. Okay, this top one up here. So this would be 13 x to the third. Whereas this one down here, this is multiplication. And so we do the 8 times 5 makes 40 and then x to the third times x to the third makes x to the sixth power here so you do have to pay attention to what operation is going on here so sometimes i'll have students that that they'll pretend that they'll add exponents here on this plus one because they remember oh but you told me you know add add the exponents whenever you have same basis in this case here though you do have to pay attention whether you're adding like terms or if you're actually doing multiplication and to use the product rule okay so do pay attention to whether this is multiplying or addition common misconception so remember with the product property you're going to keep the base keep your same base and you're going to add the exponents and here's all the examples that fit the the product property or the product rule of exponents that we went over on this video today